All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine, and Pipeliner CRM. And today I am delighted to be joined by Tim David, who is in Boston, Massachusetts. How are you doing, Tim? Doing well, John. Thanks for, uh, for having me on. Fantastic. And Tim is the author of Magic Words, The Science and Secrets Behind Seven Words That Motivate, Engage, and Influence. And is that, you see the way he made that appear? He's actually also a, yeah, All, also uh, a, a out. former professional ma magician. So that's how he was able to conjure that out of thin air. See? <laughs> well, today what we wanted to talk about is email, right? So email is still a very important communication tool, but I don't think a lot of people still know how to use email properly and certainly not how to properly or effectively ask for something uh, in an email. So Tim, what, what are some of the secrets to being able to effectively ask for something in email? Yeah, I think email, you're absolutely right, is is one of those communication tools that not a lot of people fully understand. Uh, you know, right now we're dealing with a lot of uh, emails being filtered by by spam filters sure. and you know not even reaching the the intended targets so you know part of you know effective email communication is obviously getting that delivered that's another topic sort of for another day outside my realm of expertise um you know what i'm interested in in all of my work tends to surround not just understanding modes of communication or understanding the next latest greatest technological mm -hmm. advancement or the newest app or the newest social media platform what, what interests me is sort of the universal underlying principles, you know, understanding that human influence component, understanding the psychology behind what drives an action. And I think at the end of the day, you know, with, with any kind of email, our hope is to, just like any communication, uh, you know, to persuade or to entertain, you know, you kind of have those different, uh, different modes. And, uh, you know, a lot of people, struggle when it comes to asking for a favor or asking for a sale or or asking for someone to endorse you know your product or your service or you know reaching out to strangers in some cases and saying hey can you you know email your list on my behalf or let's collaborate on a project and and these kinds of asks uh, can be difficult and we want to put our best foot forward and and have a, an email that is clear and concise and to the point gets opened gets read uh, and all those things. Uh, in fact, in my, my, my most recent book, uh, I actually have it in front of me because I had Excellent. a feeling you might ask me about this. I was going to ask you about this. And it's sort of a, um, you know, you know, the, the uh, getting, um, you know, asking for something in an email is sort of a, you know, there's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of different uh, factors that go into it. So I have my book at the ready to sort of dip in and look at some of the some of the 13 different yeah. strategies and suggestions and ideas. For, yeah. And the book yeah. and the book is Flip the Four Levels of Influencing People. Correct. Excellent. So why do you think it is? I mean, I guess people have been so uh, kind of brainwashed around email that everybody hates email. Nobody wants to get email. And therefore, people go almost like tie themselves up in, in pretzel knots trying to almost avoid saying anything meaningful in an email because they're so afraid of the rejection or getting unsubscribed or getting reported or it just being deleted. Yeah, you know, one of the interesting facts that I came across in my, my research is the fact that, um, you know, where deception occurs in communications. And uh, this is a little bit of an aside, a little bit off topic, but sure. when you mentioned, you know, putting things into uh, you know, text on a screen and then sending it off and being leery of that, uh, there's less deception that happens in email because there is documentation. So when, you know, I, I, and I found this true as well for myself, you know, when I got my first book deal, I, you know, I used to be able to write very, very freely. And then it got into the back of my mind, oh my gosh, people are going to read this. You know, people mm -hmm. are going to see this. This is going to go out into the world. And it, and it affected my writing as well. So both as the recipient, but also as the crafter and writer of emails, you know, th these sorts of things can definitely uh, affect how we think about uh, how we think about email. So what is one of the what is one of the key um, components to approaching uh, email and being able to, you know, really make it so that you can ask and you can have the right psychological impact? 
Yeah, you know, I think it's really, really important to be clear and concise. Right in your subject line, you kind of want to give people a heads up of what it's about. People like try to get cutesy with their subject lines. They try to trick people with their subject lines just to get them to open it. Sometimes they're aggressive or forceful. Some of the best subject lines are simply, you know, hey, idea, you know, this is an idea I wanted to run by you, or, you know, hey, I had a favor that I, and I was hoping I could ask your help. You know, obviously shorter versions of those, those sure. types of uh, sentiments. But, um, you know, I wish there was a formula or a cut and paste subject line, but those things definitely change, not just individual to individual, but day to day, week to week, industry to industry. Uh, you know, the, there's a lot of, like I said, moving parts with that. But clarity, concise, clear communication, I can't stress that enough, right in the subject line. And there's also a, a, a sort of a secret trick that uh, you know, there's, there's a company called Boomerang and, and they are an email, mm -hmm. you know, sort of right. email service provider or a, yeah. you know, what they do uh, accentuates you know, email service. So um, they've done a study of over 300,000 emails and they wanted to know which ones are getting responded to and which ones are not getting responded to. So they had this massive amount of data. They looked at all the different um, ways that people end in email. So it's not just the subject at the beginning of the email that's really important, but also the very end of the email, right before your name, that thing that you say, right to sort of close it out and that, that, that feeling that you leave people with, uh, there is a phrase, sort of a magic phrase, if you will, that um, goes from you know the baseline percentage re response rate is, is 47.5%. Less than half of emails get responded to across the board. 47.5% response rate. These are personal emails, you know, not necessarily an email blast to a list. Sure. Um, but with this magic phrase at the end, it goes up to 65.7% response rate. Just adding these three little words at the end, and, and there's another little added added uh, piece that I'll, that I'll give it to you uh, later as well. So that's at the end. Well, I'm sort of teasing that now and, yeah. and be sure to ask me and bring me back to tell you what that phrase is, obviously. Um, but, uh, you know, everything in the middle is, is pretty important as well. So uh, I'm going to give you just a, a handful of these tips. And like I said, I got yes. this book sort of as my own resource uh, to, to do this. And, and when I write emails, I do. I pull this out and I say, okay, uh, if I really want this to land, I got to make sure I hit on all these things. But one that one area that's really important is to do your research to find mm -hmm. out who you're writing this email to. You know, too many people say, "Okay, this person is a prospect, and all I know about them is their title." That is yeah. it. I just know their job title. Therefore, I'm going to email them with my offer, and I'm going to try to get them to do this favor for me. Uh, take five minutes. My goodness, look at their Facebook profile. Look at their LinkedIn profile you know, watch if they have, uh, you know, videos or content or something like that on their site, uh, you know, uh, about their company on their company's website. Look at that stuff, do your yeah. research, and therefore you'll be able to fill in a lot of the blanks. The the, it's the still, biggest, by the way, it's still amazing how many emails you still get today from people offering you the very service that you sell yourself, which right, is quite right. amazing that they haven't even done that level of right. like we get we get people emailing us. Are you you know interested in a CRM? We'll say, well, not really, because we actually sell one. <laughs> right. It's right on the wall behind you. I mean, that's that's yeah. pretty, uh, pretty blatant. And I, you know, yeah. all your marketing, I've, I've noticed as well. It's, it's clear what you do in yeah. two seconds. Would have uh, would have revealed that you know to a person and uh, yeah absolutely so you know it, it's the letter or the email is affected greatly by what comes after the dear mm -hmm. blank are you writing a letter to grandma or are you writing a letter to this girl that you met or an email I'm saying letter look at my <laughs> age uh, or are you writing a, a an email to uh, a, someone that you met at the club last weekend hopefully those emails are going to be very, very different. So <laughs> the person that you're writing to and understanding that person will guide and direct much of, um, you know, of the email as well. But you got to research that. You got to take the, 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 the five, you know, take five minutes, go, go deep, you know, if it's a really important five whole minutes, <laughs> you know, and, uh, and, and learn a little bit about the person. So that's definitely one of the, uh, one of the major tips that I hear a lot from, from people. And I think one of the problems is that, unfortunately, obviously, we have these tools where we can just churn out stuff, right? So, right. and I think it has, uh, it has, the temptation there is to become kind of lazy and find, you know, get a generic email together and then just blast the world as opposed to actually taking the time that you, you outlined there. 
Yeah, and these things are high leverage emails. I and mean, people are sending you know emails to ask for someone to endorse their book or to partner with them mm-hmm. or create a, you know some kind of joint venture. And there's a there's a high leverage opportunity here, but they're still just you know willy nilly or or filling out some kind of sort of templated approach or or like you said batch and blasting. Mm-hmm. So uh, I want to give you guys a couple, you know a couple more, and I want to give your listeners yeah. a few more just really tangible, practical stuff. One of the sneaky brain hacks that I've come across is something that psychologists call the name letter effect. And this Mm. is absolutely applicable in email. So the very first thing, you're gonna use that person's name in the email. Hi, John. You know, you're absolutely gonna say that person's name. Uh, Why not? You know, would you walk into a room and just start talking to somebody with, oh, hey, buddy, what's good? You know, you you address the person, but Mm -hmm. also it, it taps into a part of their brain that almost kind of commandeers their attention. And that's the sound of their own name. So if you've ever been at a party and you're discussing something over here at the table with this punch and you're having some punch with someone and off in the corner, you hear someone mention your name and instantly you, 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 know, you mm-hmm. turn and like, oh, who's talking about me? Well, your brain heard everything that was going on around you, but it prioritized your name, right? They call yeah. this the, the cocktail party effect. So in an email, when they see their name or the letters in their name. So for example, uh, this, is, this is the name letter effect that psychologists have come across. This, this is surprising. It's almost like real magic to me. <laughs> but did you know that if your name is Tony, you're more likely to purchase a Toyota than a Honda? Wow. If your name is Chris, you're more likely to prefer the taste of Coke than Pepsi uh, to Pepsi. So uh, this has been studied extensively. This is one of the most consistent findings. This is not major, massive uh, influence. Although if your name is Georgia, you're 88% more likely to live in the state of Georgia than what relative statistics would indicate. So there's some that are, that are I mean, these are significant life choices sure. where you live and Larry's are more likely to be lawyers and Dennis is gonna be a dentist more, more likely. <laughs> So these are crazy things. Why not, in your emails, tell Frank that the idea is fantastic. Uh, Tell Mm -hmm. Tom that it's terrific. Why not just tap into the pre-existing brain circuitry that's already there to have them hone in and dial in on things that remind them of themselves. Psychologists call it implicit egotism. We like things that remind us of ourselves. In fact, the the word like is this is like me right i like this because it's like me and uh the name and the letters in the name are absolutely a simple way to uh to tap into that that that, that's a fantastic one that's one that people could use immediately i mean yeah super uh, simple yeah yeah (laughs) of course it might struggle a little bit if somebody's name is uh, xavier Xavier. yeah (laughs) but that's okay right right (laughs) he loves the loves the x-men that guy (laughs) over marvel So what? Um, so what? Another couple of uh, of uh, ideas that people can uh, latch onto that are kind of simple to implement. Well, instead of talking about things that increase uh, attention and increase compliance, uh, or excuse me, uh, response rates, let's mm-hmm. talk about something that decreases them. And um, there are really a, a couple of things. One is the word "not" or negative sort of. Um, you know, uh, words that, that are designed to uh, eliminate a thought. So, mm-hmm. you know, for example, don't hesitate to contact me. We right. can fix that. We can make that better. And the reason why yeah. we, we want to eliminate, you know, we don't want to say what it's not. We want to say what it is, is because the brain has a really hard time with understanding not commands or no, uh, mm-hmm. the concept of no. Seems like a simple concept, but if I were to tell you right now, do not think of the word hippopotamus for the next 10 seconds. Yeah, I'm thinking of hippopotamus. It's pretty hard. It's pretty hard not to, right? Because your brain is, keeps checking in. It's like, am I thinking of? No, I got to make sure that I'm not doing that thing that I'm not supposed to be thinking about, which is, uh, of course, hippopotamus. And there's like this whole herd of hippopotami, I don't know, just storming through your brain. It's all you sure. can think about. So, you know, we can replace- That's my them. day, Rune. Yeah, a whole day now. <laughs> just all hippopotamus. So uh, we can replace things like it will cost you nothing with it's free. We can say it'll only take five minutes of your time. We can replace that with, I'd like to spend five minutes with you. Uh, Mm -hmm. I know you're busy, but can be replaced with, I respect your time. And, you know, so different Mm -hmm. things like that we can use to uh, remove what we call uh, resist, you know, any kind of resistance. You know, so another idea is the very simple, 
idea that you should be using the pronoun I, me, and my a lot less than you're using the pronouns you, we, us, our, sure. your. Uh, and that's that's some there's some pretty startling research from a guy named James Pennebaker that spent 30 years studying this stuff. And this guy's really cool. Like if you send him your Twitter handle, uh, he'll analyze all your tweets, just the pronouns that you use, and right. he'll tell you all about your personality, like really in-depth stuff. Uh -huh. uh, it'll just it'll blow your mind. So he's got a lot of data to sort of back this up. But you know, the person, his most significant finding across his decades of research is that the person with the higher status the person like in charge of this, you know, right. interaction uses fewer I words, you know, and mm -hmm. the person with the, the, the lower status is, uh, you know, is using more. Yeah, and if you go back yeah. through your emails and think about, oh, I'm e emailing my boss or I'm emailing this person who I view as a mentor or someone I really respect, you, you say things like, I really would like to talk to you and I have this idea and I'm kind of mm -hmm. nervous, but, you know, but if you're talking to somebody who's asking you a question and views you as a mentor, then you say, well, yeah, you do this and you do that and you do that. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it's an interesting uh, and simple way, once again, to increase your level of perceived status just by reducing the number of I language and, and increase. Yeah, yeah. And, that, and that sounds good. I mean, and that's good for conversation too, because I mean, you should really be focused, especially if you're in sales, you should be focusing on the other person and less on yourself anyway. Yeah, 10 to 15% of the talking if you're in a face-to-face yeah. -face interaction. So, uh, you know, same goes for email with the, you know, with, with the topic consideration. Yeah. All right, Tim. Well, uh, we're coming up against the end of our time, but you promised us those oh, yes. three magic words. So uh, here we go. It is not uh, best or best regards. It is not kind yeah. regards or cheers uh, or even thank you. It is <laughs> thanks in advance. Right. So where it gets weird with an exclamation point and a smiley face emoji with a nose. That apparently makes a, a smiley face emoji. With a nose, with the little dash, you know, so the, the colon, then a dash, oh. and then parentheses. The nose makes a difference for some reason. It's funny, like oh I said. I, I, so I, not even the real emoji, like the, the, the put together one? I, I don't know. I don't know if they studied that. That's a good question. Um, but what they said was, if it's just an emoji with a colon, parentheses, it's better to add the nose in. So, um, hmm. you know, uh, and again, I know the, the human brain has a, has a propensity for faces, and that's another attention grabber. But uh, yeah, the top three answers, in fact, thanks in advance, thanks, and thank you. Those are the top three, uh, which is why uh, thanks is, is my favorite magic word of all time. It's, yeah. it's one of the most powerful to both hear, but also to say. So um, Excellent, excellent. Well, uh, Tim David, the book is Flip the Four Levels of Inf Influencing People and your other book, Magic Words. But before we go, if you want to tell people a little bit more about yourself, how they can learn more and what you do. Yeah, best thing to do is uh, just to go grab my free giveaways. I have, uh, I think the most popular one is a list of 62 psychological influencers. Add more of these into your communication, your influence goes up. Remove these and your influence goes down. Uh, and that can be found at moreinfluential.com. Once again, just for the, uh, the price of an email address, you pop your email address and I'll email it over to you. Uh, but there's also a handful of other things on there. Uh, selling for introverts is an audio program I created for salespeople specifically, and uh, just ways to create more connection uh, with people using these psychological principles of influence. Excellent. Well, I just signed up myself, so I'm looking Beautiful. forward to, to getting the uh, resources. So again, my name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Thank you for another expert interview. Thank you, Tim, for joining us today. Look forward to seeing you all in another interview really soon. Thank you.